everybody, it's time for Everyday Cooking with Lynn and Heather. Today we're going to do an all-American classic. We are going to show you how to do a stuffed hamburger with homemade french fries. Now, with homemade french fries, I know people are going to be like, oh my god, really, you want me to spend that much time in the kitchen cutting potatoes? It's really not that bad. However, you can also apply what we're going to show you on those to store-bought potatoes. It's just basically seasoning the potato, but I'm going to tell you the homemade ones, you're going to know the difference. So here we go. You're going to love this. Everything's new because it's our first show, so bear with us. Yeah. But the first thing we're going to be showing you is stuffed hamburgers. All right. Well, this is um, already cut French fries. I use the um, Yukon Gold. Yukon Gold. Yukon Gold potatoes to do this. And what I did was we just cut a potato down the center. We're going to start with these potatoes. Now I've already cut these up and I've already put them in a bag. I put a little bit of oil in there and then I put um, dry ranch seasoning mix. You can get that in the um, dressing aisle. We put two packages of it to this many potatoes. And because it's already got the oil in it, with just a little bit, it's a little runny because potatoes are going to um, leak out some fluid. They have natural so, uses anyway. That's yes. why when you bake a potato, yes. sometimes you find that your paper towel at the bottom will be running. Yeah, so I already did this for you, so you don't have to do it. But Lynn is going to show you, with one potato, how you get started. Okay. First thing you're going to always want to do when you're peeling a potato is peel away from you. Remember, say it with me, kids. Peel away from you, okay? If you want to be peeling towards you, just make sure you've got 911 on auto dial because you're going to take finger off. Yep. So, there you go. Very simple. Not hard at all. Just make sure you have a good peeler. Okay. I'm not going to spend the whole time peeling this. And then, with your knife, you want to make sure you cut it right down. Now, here's the thing. If you have a food processor where you can put them like this, or you can do them even smaller, go right ahead. Yeah. And then you just cut the pieces like that. And it's really to your liking, how thick you like them. We like thick potatoes. You might have heard them called steak fries. Yes. I like my potato to really be meaty. So that's how you're going to do the potatoes. Just, again, peel them, cut them. Sometimes they call it quartering. It's a little more than quartering, depending on the size of the potato. So the difference between Heather and I also is I like skins on my potatoes for some things. She really doesn't, so that's why these particular potatoes do not have skins. But if you're someone who does like that, you can do this same recipe with the skin on the potatoes. Just make sure you wash the potatoes really, really well. Okay. Okay. Now that we've shown you how to do that, we're going to show you what to do next. We, like I said, I just put it in a, a beautiful Ziploc bag because I love to use those in everyday cooking. It just makes things easier and you can just throw it away. You don't have to wash it. That's the great part. And then we're just going to lay it out on the pan. And we didn't put any oil or anything on the pan. It is a basic baking pan. Right. Do, we don't suggest you do it with a flat baking pan because, again, of the liquid that comes out, you do want to have a baking pan with sides. So that's something you're definitely going to want to have. And then you want to um, take these potatoes and place them so they're not on top of each other so they will bake through because these are real potatoes and not the frozen kind. These are the um, true Yukon Golds. Yep. And if you're not a fan of Yukon Golds, you can use Reset. You can even use the large reds or the purple. Again, it's really to your taste what you exactly. want. We like these potatoes because, again, when you're talking about a true homemade french fry, you want that french fry to have some meat to it. You want it to be a good french fry. This whole entire pan right here can service between five to six people. Mm -hmm. And that's, what would you say that is? Maybe five potatoes, six potatoes? Oh no, it's half a bag. Okay, so well, over a half a bag. Okay, so that's about eight. Morning. Yeah, okay, so about eight potatoes. Okay, now we're going to put this in the oven. It's going to be on 425 preheated. And do not put it in before it hits the 425 mark, whether it's a gas or an electric oven. When we tell you to preheat the oven to a certain temperature. Do not go, oh yeah, it'll be good in five minutes. No. You wait for your oven to be preheated to yep. the exact temperature that you put it in. Mm -hmm. So so we're going to go ahead and put these bad boys in. 
you're going to base how long you cook your potatoes on the size of, size of the potatoes. The smaller the potatoes, I say start out at 20, 25 minutes and check them. The way you know your potato is done is when you put a fork in them, it goes in with ease. You don't feel that hardness that you do like on a raw potato. They should be really soft on the inside and crunchy on the outside. So for this size potato, for the size wedges that we're doing, we're going for approximately 45 minutes. Now that's not a definite. We're going to set the oven for 45 and check it. If you don't have a timer on your oven, I highly suggest you get one. If you don't want to invest in a kitchen timer, that's why another reason God invented the cell phone. You can use your timer on your cell phone, whatever. If the kids are watching a, a TV show and you know it's a half hour long, use that, whatever you have available. Yeah. Yeah. So the next thing on our list is going to be the hamburgers. Yep. So Tried and true. Yep. We're going to make stuffed hamburgers today. And this is Lynn's recipe and you're going to really love it. Now, you can pay a lot more for stuffed hamburgers that are already stuffed in the supermarket. Don't do it. Really. This is easy to do. You can um, make it in just a couple of minutes once you have the ingredients cut up and ready. And then you'll have your hamburgers ready. The other thing with stuffed hamburgers, too, is I'm going to give my mother a props here for a minute. She's been making stuffed hamburgers for 20 years. She has never used any specific kind of silly gadget that they are now marketing that you need to stuff a hamburger at. This is what you need to stuff a hamburger. Hamburger, what to stuff it with, and your thumb. If you have those three things, you will be a success. The other thing I like to do with my hamburgers, too, is it's not that I don't love a good plain hamburger, but I like a little seasoning to my burgers. I want to kick it up a notch. So I use a garlic and herb dry seasoning, again, right in the salad dressing aisle at the, at the grocery store. You don't add anything in, just put it right in dry. We use, today we're using 80-20. I know a lot of people are going to go, that's really high fat. You're right, it is. The reason I use 80-20 for this is the fat content keeps the burger tighter together for when you're making the stuffed burger. You can always use the better meat, the 90-10, the 95-5. The yeah. Completely your, whatever your taste. Yeah. I go with the 80-20, again, specifically because of the fat content to hold it together. And it makes it taste better. I know there's a lot of people out there that don't like um, to have a lot of fat if they're watching their diet or their waistline or whatever, but if you don't have the fat, you really can't get as good a flavor, especially in meats. So you really do need to keep that fat in there. And as you can see, she's just kneading all that beautiful package flavor in there. And so any of the packages you want, just think of a hamburger as a smorgasbord of whatever your favorite flavor is. Yep. So just go to the store, and there's plenty of dry little packages of different kinds of flavoring there, and you can do that. And it's really, really easy, and um, it just makes everything taste better. A lot better. And it's cheaper. Mm -hmm. Always a good thing. It's always a great thing when you're on a budget. Okay, so give us a minute. I'm at, we're going to take a little break, and I'm going to show you come back, how to come back and stuff these bad boys. And we're back. So, here we are making our stuffed hamburgers. I already got one. I'm going to tell you right now, when you do them, they're almost going to feel like the consistency of a hockey puck. That's because of the weight of the meat and what we're putting in them. For our stuffing today, I am using New York Extra Sharp Cheddar Cheese and Blue Cheese. Now, this is a little trick I do. If you can invest in some bamboo skewers, which I think like are a buck for a hundred of them, this is great because then you put the skewers in either the cheese, the cheddar, or the blue, so you don't have to try and guess when they're actually cooked. Now, one of the other things, too, when you go to cook these, hamburgers are a great barbecue food. These are. Through experience, I've learned when you go to put these on the barbecue as they cook, they fall apart on the barbecue. If you want that barbecue flavor, put a piece of tin foil down so you have a solid area. You're not going to get the grill marks, but you'll get the barbecue flavor. If your big thing is you want grill marks, cook them inside on a griddle. So, this is what you do. You take meat, you take probably about the size of a baseball. Have it nice and round. Once it's round, you start just digging out the middle with your thumb. Super simple. You're going to notice that it's very, very, very sticky. And it's very, 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 I don't know how to say it, moist. So, that's...
that's what you want to see. You want to see that kind of indentation in the middle. Okay? So now I did some I did one cheddar already for Heather. I'm gonna do another one. And how much cheese you put in is depending on your liking. Heather likes cheese. Okay. And I'll tell you right now, stay tuned for when we do our next episode for Heather's cheddar biscuits. That is good stuff, let me tell you. So once you put that in there like that, just fold it. So all you're gonna do is you just fold the meat over. Nothing fancy, roll it, almost like make it look like a giant meatball, and then just flatten it. If you see little holes, which I just had a couple little holes, same thing, re-roll it. Re-roll it, and then flatten it. And again, it's gonna kinda look like a hockey puck because of the thickness of the meat and what's inside of it. I already pre-did a couple of these while we were off camera. Again, you wanna see that little indentation Roll it into the giant meatball and then start putting that indentation in there. Now this is going to be one of mine. So we are going to put blue cheese in this bad boy, which I love. So just drop some blue cheese in there. And really, feel free to do whatever you like. Whatever kind of cheese you like. Absolutely. Sharp, blue, whatever. Just, just, just remember sometimes soft cheeses have a higher, is it a higher melting point? Where yeah. they, yes, they have a higher melting point. Yep. So that means they melt out quickly and then you don't get that chunk of cheese problem with biscuits because I tried to use um, smoked gouda and it was just too soft. It um, the, the, um, the cheese just melted into the biscuit and so you didn't get that really beautiful chunk of cheese in the middle. So you really do need to research um, your cheeses to find out which would work better in what oven temperature and what you're doing. The, what, the one thing I can tell you from experience is you do not want, I call it liquid cheese. You don't want anything like that. Mm -hmm. um, it seems like it's probably gonna be a good idea to be going with, begin with and it'll melt and go throughout. Mm -hmm. Bad, just yeah. bad mess all over the place. One of the things we're gonna show you in our cooking show is on top of not only how to do it, how not to do it. Because we've learned through experience what's better and what doesn't work. Yeah. So again, some um, cheese, drop it in there. And the nice thing is with crumblies too, they kind of pack better. When you have a hard cheese like the brick cheese that we cut, packs better. When you have the crumblies, they pack better too. Mm -hmm. So again, that's how you do that. Now the other thing you want to remember too when you're doing this, if you're going to cook these inside in a pan, which is what we're going to do today, Preheat the pan. Don't just drop them down into a cold pan. Preheat it. If you have an electric oven, put it on about three or three. Don't go any higher than that. If you have a gas oven, keep it at a low. You don't really want to go too high because then you're going to scorch your pan. Yeah. But putting a little preheat on it so you get that sizzle, you get that uh, that browning on the meat. Mm -hmm. It's really nice. Now, do you put oil in your pan or anything in your pan before you put the meat in there? If I have a meat that's a higher level fat, like the mm -hmm. 20 that we're using, no. Okay. Because I find that a lot of oil comes out of these with the fat content. Yeah. 95, 5, 90, 10, a little, a little, like a teaspoon mm -hmm. of olive oil doesn't hurt. Right. Because hamburger always shrinks. Always. 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 That's, I think that's why some people get a little intimidated sometimes with hamburger. You can buy hamburger pre-made. You can buy them in the pre-made patties. Mm -hmm. That is the worst thing in the world for this recipe. Yeah. However, however, if you are pressed for time, you can do it. You're going to use two patties per burger, and you want a very thin, thin layer of cheese in between. Do not use chunk. Do not use crumble. You have to use an actual like slice. And you can go to your local deli and get just about any type of cheese slice. They even sell blue cheese in slices at our local bar, our, our local grocery store. So don't feel like you're hindered by that. And remember also, if you've had frozen hamburger and you let it unthaw, it will not pass. You cannot make a hamburger out of frozen hamburger that's been already frozen. It won't pack, it won't do what it needs to do. So you really do need fresh hamburger. Yep. Frozen hamburgers 
really good for like spaghetti. I will get a block of frozen hamburger out and I will um, cook it in the pan and and I, I'll probably do that one day and I'll show you how to do that so that you know how to make a, a meal pretty quickly without having to have it fresh. Because we're going to try to show you different things. How to really um, make your budget stretch with food. What you need to put in your spice rack. That's a very key important ingredient. Very. Um, the little things that you need to have in the house for canned foods so that you can have a quick meal with anything. You know, like I always keep canned cream of chicken soup, cream of mushroom soup. Those are the things that you can add to other recipes in a really quick way. And all you have to do is add water or broth. You can use chicken broth or any kind of broth. So it just depends on what you're making. So there are stock items that you need in your pantry that you can just pull out really quickly and only take like maybe 20 minutes to make a meal for your family if you don't have time. One of my favorite stock items that I always keep because I can, like Heather said, you can make a very quick meal and it's very easy, like she said with the cream of chicken soup, keep cream of chicken soup available and Bisquick. Mm -hmm. Cream of chicken soup and Bisquick can turn into a chicken and biscuit dinner if you keep some, let's say you had chicken three days ago but now nobody wants it because it's three day old chicken. You can turn three day old chicken into chicken and biscuits in under 20 minutes. And we will, we will try to do a lot of these recipes for you so that you can see what we're talking about. And also we, we're, we want your input. So please um, contact us by email or while we're on, if we're on Facebook, you know, you can always just message us. And um, we will take your comments and we will listen and we will try to implement anything that you actually want to see that you've never done yourself before. Okay, now we've got our last burger. Now, I made eight burgers. Now, as you can see, these burgers are pretty good size. They're not what you would call a little, uh, little burger. These are gonna, these are gonna fill you up. So, once you get those burgers done, okay, you're working with raw meat. Always wash your hands. Thing number one, always wash your hands working with raw meat because it just takes putting your hands on something once to spread salmonella. Yes. Now, I've already had my pan preheating on three because I have an electric oven. Everybody can feel bad for me now. So, yes, we were just having a conversation about how electric versus gas. I love a gas oven. I grew up with one. She loves a gas oven. Ew. But sometimes you're stuck with an electric and that's what you have. There's nothing we can do about that. And all your friends can feel bad for you. Yes, exactly. So what you want to do is, when you get ready to put these into the pan, this is the size pan I'm using. It's roughly about a 12 inch pan. On this particular one, I like using the one with the top on it because of the fat content and the cheese, this will splatter. So just pop them in. Again, high fat content on the meat, so I have not greased my pan. Ooh, hear that sizzle, ain't that beautiful? Lord. That is a good sound. Now all these ones are uh, blue cheese? Nope, these are a mix of the blue cheese and the cheddar. When you've done enough of these, as I have over the years, I can tell the difference between them, which one's which. Now again, if you don't, skewers are your best friend. You can even put them in just a little bit at the top, just so you can tell mm -hmm. which ones are which. And believe me, if you're making these for your family and some of them may not like one or the other kind of cheese, they'll appreciate it. So you're just going to drop those in, cover it. You just want to let them go until you see them really start to brown. When they're done, you will see start, some of the cheese come out of that. Really nothing you can do about it. And what temperature is that on? I have that on three right now because that was my preheating temperature. Mm -hmm. But to get these bad boys to cook, I'm kicking it up to between six and seven. And that is how you do stuffed hamburgers. Ta-da! Ta-da! <laughs> so we talked about hamburgers and french fries, but now we're going to talk about my favorite thing, which is a salad. When I moved up north, I 
moved from North Carolina to New York. So we live in Syracuse, New York. And the salads here, uh, they're pitiful. Just shameful, really. <laughs> I remember the first time I got a salad in a restaurant. And it was a wedge of lettuce with a tomato. This, I mean, is, this is a New York salad. Yes, yeah, it was awful. I said, oh, God, how am I going to survive up here? I'm a southern girl. I like vegetables. And I always grew up on farms where we always had fresh vegetables. And in the winter, yes, our vegetables, the salads were not fresh in the winter as much because we couldn't get them as much. But still, it wasn't a, it's not a salad. What they call a salad here is not a salad in the South, let me tell you. So I want to prepare for you a salad that I love. This is very easy to do. Okay, so we're going to start with the greens. Now, I've already cut this up and prepared this for everybody so that you can just dump it. This is what I love. Remember when you take salads to other people? This is the best way to take it. Put it in a bag. Wash it. Put it in a bag. Best way to do it. Now, this is consistent of kale. I have kale and carrots, red leaf lettuce and some iceberg lettuce because that's my husband's favorite so i had to put that in there and that's what this is now i have pulled this apart dried it with a paper towel because i washed it and then i dried it with a paper towel that's the easiest way to dry these things so we're just going to put the salad together by putting it in the bowl now and then i'll go over the dressing because i made homemade italian dressing which i think is going to really love i know i'm going to love it uh-huh so this is our bag of lettuce that I already did. Again, this is red leaf lettuce, green leaf lettuce, iceberg lettuce, and kale. Kale is supposed to be one of those superfoods, and the first time I ever tried it was at a restaurant, and it was the best thing. It, like, lasted all day. Like, I wasn't hungry for a long, long time after eating kale. It was really, really good. In my world, I call that a steak. <laughs> So I have a little bag of scallion onions. I'm not putting a salad because my friend here doesn't like onions. So we'll cook with them. We'll flavor with them. Yes. That's about as far as it's going. <laughs> and I love onions in my salad. Go ahead and put them out. I'll, I'll take them out. Um, we'll we'll okay. Yeah. All right. So we put compromise, people. Compromise. <laughs> yes. So we're going to put scallions in there that I've already cut up. Woohoo. And I've, have you seen those little mini bell peppers? that are in the back. They're little tiny ones, and they come in beautiful different colors. Yep. That's what this is. So I just chopped them up, and I'm going to put that in there. And I usually always put broccoli in there. This time, not. I didn't get broccoli this time because I forgot, honestly. And we're thanking her for that. <laughs> I love broccoli and salad. My daughter loves broccoli and salad, but a lot of people don't. And this is cucumbers. Now, I have a bone to pick with restaurants that leave the skin on the cucumbers. I hate that. I understand why they do it. It makes the cucumber last longer. Cucumber is mostly water. It doesn't water down the other things. I get that. But I don't like skin on my cucumbers. And I got to really agree with her on this one. That is one thing we definitely agree on. That is a pet cucumber. I can't stand it. Right? And it doesn't even taste good. No, it doesn't. It's like rubber on it. Right. It's gross. So and we're, we're going to we're gonna tell you one more thing. Adding two things coming up. Heather, being from the South, has an amazing recipe for pickling for her own cucumbers, yeah, that's going to be in the next few shows, believe me. And the pickling of the cucumbers, you do not have to wait a year in a jar for them. Okay, so we added the cucumbers, and now we're going to add these beautiful cherry tomatoes on day party. Let me tell you, the best snack in the world is cherry tomatoes and blue cheese dressing. Right. <laughs> it's almost as good as ice cream sandwiches, but... To me, it's better. Sitting down with some cherry tomatoes and blue cheese dressing. And a tip that I have about these tomatoes, don't put them in the fridge. They don't belong in the fridge. If they have the vine on them, you put them in a beautiful little sunny window panel right here, and they will stay fresh for you, like, summer for at least three or four days. And it, you want them warm. You don't want them cold. Because tomatoes cold are just not as good. It's like having it right out of the field when they're warm. It's really great. So we're just going to take these and just put them right in there. That'll be something coming up at our shows during the summer as well. Um, one of the things we want to do is we want to show you some farm-to-table recipes mm -hmm. where we're going to go right to some of our local farms and pick our food for that day and come home and we're going to make that meal that day farm-to-table. Yep. And um, 
um, Lynn goes to Farmer's Market all the time. I really wasn't a big fan of them until I started going with Lynn. And now I really like them. They, they really do have a, a large selection, and it is supporting your local growers, which is great. But they also have really good prices. The other thing you have to be careful about with Farmer's Market is you got to get to know your grower, number one. Build a relationship with them. Because then it happens where sometimes you might get something that goes bad kind of quickly. Don't be afraid to talk to your grower and say, hey, I bought this last week and it only lasted a few days. You have to be honest with them and they have to know what's going on with their product so that they can be successful. Okay, so this is for, I always put feta cheese on mine and that's what I love. But you can make any cheese you want. Cheddar, blue cheese, whatever. My mom loves blue cheese. Hi, mom. Um, but feta is really good. Let me get the other one. Mm -mm. So we're just going to add the feta right on top. And there, my friends, is a southern salad the way that it is supposed to be. And I am going to make you homemade dressing. Now, well, I've already made it. Put it in a bottle. But I'm going to show you how. This is my beautiful homemade Italian dressing. And I'm going to go down the list really quickly of what it is. But we're going to actually have the recipe on the Facebook page so that you can go and get it with the uh, measurements. One thing you need to know though, Lynn and I are not very good at um, measuring sometimes. We have to say on a second, Easy Rider's going in the fridge. Okay, so we've already made the beautiful salad. Now we're gonna um, go over, I'm gonna go over lightly what the dressing details of. Now this is a dressing that you can let set out if you want to or you can put it in the fridge. It does have sugar in it, so some people say you need to put it in the fridge. It's up to you. I don't because the vinegar in it is enough to secure the sugar. <laughs> so I don't do that. Um, she was nice enough to make me my own. So. Yes, I got her her own without okay. onion flavoring in it because she doesn't like onion. My friend tells me it's glorious. <laughs> okay, I'm going to put mine back here so she doesn't use it because, you know, it's mine. <laughs> you like. 
And we're going to suggest you invest in one of these if you're using any type of citrus liquid. Mm -hmm. This will really get in there and it will dig every ounce of liquid out of that citrus. These are great for lemons, limes, mm -hmm. oranges, or lemons. Mm -hmm. Now, this is something that you might not know. Tomatoes. I put a tomato in here. And let me tell you how I did that. I took one of those little um, things that you do the twisting on to get the juice out. Oh, like an, like an orange juicer. Uh, orange juicer or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I put a tomato there. Mm -hmm. And I twisted it to get the juice out. Because you want a little bit of tomato seed. And you want a little bit of tomato. And the reason why, it just gives that extra boost and flavor to it that is just really good. So that was the last item. Um, not the skin or the meat of the tomato. You just want the juice and maybe some seeds because you want it really fine. And then you just, you make it, you set it out, you shake it up really good, and you set it out for a day to let it really, you know, get all those flavors in there. And you're going to really love it. I really think you will. And again, we'll put the, um, We'll put the recipe on the Facebook page along with measurements, I think, that you can do. As close as we can get them. As close as we can get them, because like I said, I don't know. A pinch, a dash. Uh, yes, exactly. That's how we cook. Yeah. <laughs> we, we actually were asked to give somebody our favorite recipes once, and the girl goes, well, how much of that do you put in? And we literally went, well, I don't know, this much? Yeah, I, exactly. After like a while, a little handful right yeah. here, you know, that much. After a while, you get so accustomed <laughs> to it. And what you're also doing too by when we give you the recipes is we've we figured out the flavor profiles for all of these different recipes mm -hmm. that work now everybody can tweak them to their likeness do yes. what you want like yes. she said but try the first one go from there mm -hmm. and like i said with this dressing just add a little bit of stuff at a time and then taste it so that you know what you like you know because you might not like the orange you might not like and he's the onion in it. Like, she doesn't like onions. That's why I made her some without it. So, whatever it is you like. The thing about the cooking is that it's cooking to what you want. That's the beauty of it. Mm -hmm. It's not what somebody else thinks is right. It's whatever you want and whatever you can afford. One of the most fun things that we like to do is when we go out somewhere and eat and we find something that we really like, we like to come home and do it ourselves. Because uh -huh. I have learned that there's nothing I haven't had somewhere else that I can't come home and make on my own. And, believe it or not, a lot of times it's better. Yeah. Because you're making it now to your taste, not the general that you get served at a restaurant. So. Right. And you can make as much as you want to. That's the thing that I like. Yeah. You know how you only get certain portions of certain things? Mm -hmm. It's like, I want some more of that. Mm -hmm. No, can more. And then buy another whole meal. Yep. And that's something we do a lot, too. When we cook, you're going to find that we don't cook on a small scale. We cook on a very, very large scale because we have families. So when you're making something, plan on leftovers. Yeah. Two more nights down the road, you're not going to have to cook. Everything's already there. Exactly. Now, you may have picky children, as both of us have had, oh, my Lord. who don't want to eat <laughs> leftovers. My advice for that is orphanage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, that's what you did. So, this is Heather's awesome, I call it the southern, the southern salad, because it is definitely very different than what we're used to up in the north. So, we took Heather out one time, and I just got to tell you guys, this is so funny. We took Heather out one time to a restaurant and we got her a wedge salad. A wedge salad is a piece of iceberg lettuce with a little bit of dressing on it and I think maybe it had a tomato or a cucumber or something with it. She looked right at us and went, what is this? So, the southern salad. Exactly. Okay, so the burgers have been cooking for roughly about 25 minutes. They have opened, which that's going to happen. Don't think you did something wrong. Don't think it's not supposed to happen. They're going to open. The cheese doesn't really fall out of them then because we've compressed them in. This is what you're looking at right now. This is 20 minutes of cooking. They are completely cooked through because we had a top on it. And you can see where some of the cheese is coming out. But again, it's not completely out of the burger. So you still have your stuffed burger. Nothing is going to change that. No gadget. Nothing. That's what's going to happen. Now, in the time we were doing that, I also sautéed some mushrooms. Sautéing mushrooms is the easiest thing in the world. Cut them up, throw them in a pan. You basically want to use for every every ounce of mushrooms a teaspoon of butter. If you're not comfortable with using butter, country crack. I can't believe it's not butter. Anything. I don't really like using oil because there's so much water that comes out of the mushrooms. But this is a great topper to the hamburgers. 
So now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take a look at our french fries. We've got about three minutes left and see where they're at. And then we're going to wait till the french fries are done, keep everything on a low heat, and then we're going to show you how to put that burger on a beautifully toasted bun and build that bad boy. After a afternoon of cooking, not even a whole afternoon, we have perfect stuffed hamburgers, homemade seasoned french fries, and a southern salad. So we hope you really did enjoy our everyday cooking with Lynn and Heather, and wait for the next one. You never know what's going to happen next. And definitely check out our blooper reel because that is going to be good. We know what's next. Cheese biscuits. <laughs> Cheese biscuits and fried chicken. <laughs> Until next Sunday. All right. Thanks for watching, you guys. Bye.